Heute ist ein Gentleman, Martin Zwerch und Martin Wetscherer. Good morning from us. Uh, my name is Martin Wetscher. This is my colleague Martin Zwerch. And uh, together we would like to uh, show you some of our projects that we were developing. We are really excited about uh, being here and about the fact that all of the stuff actually works because we are tired at the same time as we stayed in the office yesterday till, till 11 and made it working in the morning anyway. So uh, we would like first to talk about architecting the Internet of Things and then show you how to easily, uh, um, how to actually uh, perform it. So first, uh, even the timing is really great because uh, we do something similar that, that was shown in the, in the previous presentation and we, I, I could say that we sort of built on top of this. So next slide, please. Oh, do not move it. <laughs> so uh, here's the basic idea of what uh, Internet of Things is and uh, how it works together. I guess that all of you have already seen Any, any device that could be called an Internet of Things device or, or whatever. And there are those, those multiple sensors, uh, LED lights, uh, motors, whatever, uh, that do the fun stuff that you so, soldier at, at home and uh, play with. So for this part, these are quite nice toys. On the other hand, there are some uh, let's say, enterprise solutions that are uh, slightly bigger, that can be like, like, like Red Hat products, because we both work at Red Hat, so this can be like, like JBoss AMQ or JBoss Fuse or JBoss BRMS and, and BPMS and stuff like that that can process all the data. And the question we asked ourselves what was what stands in between? How do you connect these things together? Because playing with the nice electronics and then stuff at your home is, is fun. But what's next? What, what do you do with, with all of this? And this is why we uh, developed a project that tries to uh, use the tools the developers are already familiar with and wire these things together. We will show you in a minute. Next slide, please. Uh, I guess we skipped a slide. <laughs> okay. That was it. <laughs> uh, this is the generic idea of, of microservices, because this is what we believe stands in between. Something that allows you to develop the actual business code, do the real stuff with the data and uh, move it forward. Uh, I guess you've seen this picture or, or you may have seen it. Uh, it comes from a paper written by Martin Fowler and it uh, simply demonstrates the, the differences between a monolithic application deployment and microservices like You don't copy the same stuff multiple times, but you can scale as you really need to provide more instances of the services that where there, there is a high demand on it. Or, and so uh, the important idea here is that actually while developing microservices to connect all this Internet of Things together, the same principles that, that were used previously in service-oriented architecture apply here as well. So this is what needs to be taken care of, like divide your business logic into layers, apply all, all the SOA design, uh, design patterns and stuff like that. And the next slide that we have already seen, it's again by two. <laughs> Magic mouse. Uh, Okay, there are three projects. First is Bulldog. This is a Java library that 
wires or that allows you to access the, the hardware stuff, the hardware parts uh, from Java API. The idea here is that uh, we actually need to run it on, on some device that is capable of, of running Java. So it's not definitely an Arduino, it's something smarter like Raspberry Pi, QB board, or BeagleBone, anything like that. And the idea here is that you use the same code and you can transparently move it between those devices, that the same code should work on all of these ARM boards. Uh, we did not start this uh, development of this library. That, that's already open source and developed one, uh, by, by one guy in, in Germany. But we uh, continue the work as uh, he has uh, no desire on, on continuing it. Uh, next project is Silver Spoon. And this is a bunch of Apache Camel components that built on top of Bulldog. You actually, or, or we provided components for, that, that provides you, let's say, higher logic, the, the middle layer. Like, you for example have a temperature sensor that communicates over I2C bus, so the I2C bus is, is covered by Bulldog. And in Camel, you have a component that says a temperature sensor, and the, it, its output is, is the actual temperature. So this is what Silver Spoon about. And uh, the last one I would like to discuss most in this presentation is Silverware, and it's about writing the, the microservices, actually. So next slide, please. Uh, okay. Silverware is, uh, I would say it's, it's nothing that, that big. It's like, you know, the, the secret advisor, like, like the conciliary in, in Godfather that just stands behind, is rarely seen, and, but, but moves the things. The aim of this project is to, is to integrate existing frameworks and stuff you already know for you to be able to concentrate on, on developing the real business code. No need to learn anything else, any other frameworks. Like compared to Spring, you don't need to develop any, any uh, blueprints or, or any XML files or, or anything like that. You just write the service that you want. And our goal is to integrate as many widely used uh, frameworks for where you can develop something that can be called microservice as possible. Uh, like CDI, Camel, Vertex, Drools, and to simply make it work together. Build a resulting jar file that can be simply deployed or, or executed, and that, could, uh, that would enable you to, to run your code without any, any extra other stuff. Uh, how it works in, in the background. It's like you create a Maven project where you put your logic, you just have something in the POM file, the dependencies on Silverware, and it automatically creates you the, the resulting jar. That's like, depending on what you use, it can be several tens of megabytes. Compared to JBoss form, for example, that, that creates 300 megabytes uh, resulting jar file. Um, also, uh, there, are, there are other similar projects that can achieve similar stuff, like you may have heard of Dejer 2, for example, uh, but it, uh, it generates uh, static classes or, or classes that, that uh, help to integrate the stuff and for example, I, I don't like it because you need to deal with code that's not yours, that's generated by some framework, and it's, uh, it does not look that, that neat as you have just a project with your business co go, uh, code, and that's it. Uh, so, next slide, please. The goals, as I mentioned at the beginning, is that 
silverware should be minimalistic. You should not know about it, really. Uh, you should be able to write what you actually need or, or the code that actually runs your business, nothing more. Like developing a CDI bean then simply asking to inject, a, for example, drool session and run it, run your data through it, and so. Uh, we built on technologies that everybody, so, or most of you are already familiar with. And uh, one of the important things here is, for example, an easy debugging as well. Like, although we use uh, proxy classes, we still, uh, we still have just one proxy, so no, no dynamically generated proxy classes that are hard to, to debug when there is something wrong in it. Um, next slide, please. These are the features that are actually, or that are currently supported. We have integration with CDI, so you can develop a CDI bean or simply Java Pojo class annotated with microservice and Silverware will automatically recognize it, deploy, starts running. You can annotate it with, with the gateway annotation and it, uh, and it made it possible to call your microservice to REST interface. Then Apache Camel, you develop a Camel route either in XML or as a root builder in a Java class. Silver automatically recognizes it on, on your class path and starts it. Uh, REST interface, that, that's what I mentioned. Monitoring, another cool stuff. We use Jolokia for that. And uh, once you have something that uh, monitors the, the status of your services in JMX, which is the case of Camel, for example, we have a plan to develop the same for the CDI part. You can immediately see it in a, some interface that uh, communicates with Jolokia, which is Hot.io, that's part of Fabricate, that's part of OpenShift version 3 that's uh, going to be made available online soon. Uh, and business rules, that this is what I mentioned already. So next slide, please. Uh, this is our roadmap. We plan to uh, support more stuff like transparent clustering. If you deploy the same jar, jar file on multiple locations in the same cluster that can talk to it together, uh, we would like to have some load balancing there. Uh, we plan to support more JVM languages, or this means languages that are uh, that can run on top of JVM. So you could develop your microservices in, in Groovy, Scala, Jiten, JRuby, whatever. Uh, transactions, we will be adding Narayana for that. Security to API man, possibly. And uh, yeah, we don't have integration with, with Vertex and MQ directly. We can call these via Camel currently, which we actually do, but that's not as smooth as, as we want it. Uh, next slide, please. These are some links where you can find Silverware. And actually, on this conference, you can find Silverware in action. We have a booth in the D wing that's, that's over there. And we've built an intelligent home demonstration. And it uh, utilizes several JBoss projects, which is uh, JBoss Fuse, JBoss AMQ, and JBoss BRMS. And all is wired together by Silverware and, ser and microservices developed in Silverware. Because we, we actually did what I mentioned at the beginning, is that we wired those sensors, LED lights, servos, with those enterprise applications and filled in the middle part. Next slide, please. And now Martin will show you uh, how you could develop a service using Silverware and Camel and made it available as a Docker image easily and deploy it on OpenShift and see the monitoring part of it. See uh, what it actually does inside. So I will handle this to you. Okay. Thanks. So 
Hi. Uh, I have prepared a demonstration of a silverware application, and uh, it's deployed to uh, OpenShift. So, So uh, you can find this uh, demonstration on GitHub on, in, on this address. Uh, so if you are curious about uh, some uh, uh, so. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> Details. So if you are curious about some details, you can see it uh, here. And uh, so let's go. Uh, so here uh, I have some uh, microservice bean, which is annotated with microservice. And it has uh, uh, just one uh, business uh, method which generates some random number. There are also some, some other methods that are just for you know, demonstration that we can actually yeah. catch CDI events and stuff like uh, that. So it's a microservice bean, and here I have three uh, camera roads. Uh, the first. Uh, the first route uh, is periodically run uh, every two seconds, and it uh, uses this uh, microservice bean. So this nicely demonstrates the integration of, of Camel and CDI in here. Like you can call the CDI bean because the microservice actually is a CDI bean, and you can call it from Camel route. You can also inject a Camel route into CDI bean. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have uh, some came out uh, decision here when the number is bigger than uh, 500. So it uh, is sent to MQDT, uh, MQDT, uh, MQDT uh, uh, queue uh, with high priority, and uh, otherwise it's sent to MQDT queue with low priority. Uh, those uh, MQTT roads are consume, consumed in those um, uh, roads, which just uh, lock. Yeah, so, so the idea here is that, that you first call the, the microservice bean from Camel, you get some random number, you let it decide whether where, where to send it, one road, second road, it's you know, just a simple demo, and then log it, and that's basically it. So uh, you have to add some dependencies on uh, a Silverware, uh, Silverware project. So import uh, microservices BOM and oops, okay, and uh, some uh, other packages. And this is this is all that actually needs to be done on the part of your project. You just yeah. inject those or add those dependencies on, on Silver and microservices. You use CDI, so CDI provider. You use Camel, so Camel provider and Camel CDI integration. Then some Camel components that you actually use in the in the example or in the application. And that's it for Silver. The oh, rest now is for the rest now is for uh, Docker. Uh, it's for Docker and for uh, OpenShift Open Shift integration. So for the OpenShift integration, there is a plugin. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a hot up uh, Maven plugin. Uh, so it made uh, it made hot application, which can be deployed by. Uh, uh, OpenShift, and also I have here some OpenShift uh, OpenShift template. Uh, if you are uh, 
Yeah, that, that, that's quite a tricky part because for running the stuff in OpenShift V3, it's not that easy. And we simply took this template and from another example and just changed the values because it's, uh, <laughs> it's how you could write <laughs> yeah, the yeah. template. I, I uh, have if, no idea. If you are curious about it, so you can uh, you can find it uh, in uh, the, uh, the GitHub, and I have also mentioned. I have also mentioned here uh, some uh, some OpenShift do documentation and and the um, archetype from which you can uh, learn how um, how those uh, uh, OpenShift templates works. So, are, are, uh, you, going, are you going to show the the, the, the standalone? The standalone okay. yeah, from the first. Uh, so we, first, we have time. first, we'll have a look on how to actually just build a project, make the resulting jar, and run it locally. Yeah. So uh, it, uh, this, this demo uses uh, MQTT uh, uh, broker. So f at first, I, I have to run uh, ActiveMQ with MQTT uh, uh, connector. I have prepared it. J boss and Q. Uh, so uh, the uh, the J boss MQ is starting, and now I can compile and run my demo. Silverware demo quick start. So this is the quick start. Uh, I I run um, even uh, maven clean package. This just builds the application as a standalone jar. It provides the necessary libraries in a separate lib directory and you can directly run this jar file yeah and uh, it's java and i have uh, to provide uh, some uh, some properties uh, how, uh, which this demo needs to connect to mqtt so it's mqtt user And th this is where the deployment can be can be customized because later in OpenShift you can configure the the image with some parameters and accommodate it to the target environment. So uh, the, those are the parameters and target. Oops. What's that? What's that? Which boy is this? Yep. Wait, I'm going to go to What's wrong with that? <coughs> Are you in the correct directory? Yeah, I'm the correct directory. So Yeah, I I haven't uh, <laughs> I it's a little bit mistake. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And now up, upon startup, Silver simply starts and scans the class path, finds all the resources it, it can deploy, which can be the, the CDI microservice or, or Camelot route, either right build, route builder or uh, the routes in XML file. And you can see that the MQTT route started pretty idle. It's not working. No. And here you can see that the routes actually are receiving the messages based on the uh, decision whether the number is, is high or, or low. And now the same in OpenShift. Okay, so let's talk. So, so how we take it from here to, to OpenShift. And make, make it work in OpenShift. Uh, I have to log in to OpenShift. I'll see login. Log it in. Oh, see. So this is the background magic create. for OpenShift. How we will, how we will uh, work with it? I have to create a template uh, in OpenShift. So it's uh, command OC create file. It's uh, quick start. It's uh, this template. It's a JSON template we saw before. Yeah, and uh, the project name is the conf. Yeah, the template is created, so I can... And the thing here is that, actually, what, what OpenShift does for you is that it takes the source code, builds it on, on its own, and then deploys your application. So once you have an, an update in, in Git, or once there is a new version of a resource in, in Maven, it can uh, upgrade, actually, the, the running service. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this open, is the OpenShift open console. OpenShift uh, web console, and th th here is our project. I have to. I have. Uh, I already have here uh, an MQTT broker, and I have to add to project. Uh, now, now the now project will connect to MQ or AMQ running inside of the OpenShift. Yeah. This is, uh, so we not just only transfer the, the Silverware application itself, but also the, the JBoss AMQ. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the template which I just uh, created. And uh, there are uh, a yeah, few... Uh, 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 some, some configuration. Some configuration uh, from which from, repository is. From, from which repository it have to get uh, sources and uh, also MQTT uh, parameters. Yeah, this is, this is the MQTT host running in OpenShift. And I want and to create it. And if everything goes okay, I will see running build okay, tak. Hmm. so this is always a magic or, or a surprise because we never know if something actually happens here <laughs> if, or not with, 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 with this <laughs> because if openshift is broken <laughs> you don't see a thing and that's it <laughs> maybe i should uh, Check internet connection. An error occurred reloading the page. <laughs> you lost internet or what? Here we are. Okay, here we are. It's 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 running. Now it's yeah, okay. So here you can see the, the output of Maven building the application. And in a minute or so we'll see it actually running. Uh, it uh, downloads some uh, Maven dependencies, but I have local uh, Nexus, so it's it's very fast. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's successful, successfully built. Successfully built, and it's pushing. And now it's it's creating the, the Docker image out of it. Okay, so it's and, it, and it, it's the end of um, build. So I can see overview. And here it is my my demo bot. And, I and can, now you can see it actually running. And I can. And see in the log we will see pretty yeah. much the same. So it's Once. starting yeah. just now. From here, it's the same that we saw before. Here, there was the Jolokia agent allowing us to monitor the, the inner state of it, which will we see in a minute. Yeah, it runs the same, and now the management part or monitoring part of it. Yeah. So because you can achieve the same in, uh, or this stuff in OpenShift to see what happens to your service. Okay. So we, now we can see management console and here we can and see uh, here are the routes that, that were configured and you can mm -hmm. even get an image of it once it starts responding okay <laughs> it's just one just it's one all running on a laptop so openshift is normally suited to run on a on a server so yeah uh, it's working uh, I can view the road diagram. Yeah, and here's the nice visualization. You can actually see the number of messages processed by each of the of the steps on, on the path and see other statistics if it was here. Our idea is to uh, develop metrics, uh, some uh, metrics or something like that for even the CDI part and other components as well. So everything uh, could be seen from from here. So, so I think that's all, I guess. I, uh, yeah, that's okay. All. And uh, now, uh, would you like to know anything more about it, or do you have any questions? Anybody? We can give you some nice scarf for a question, uh, like almost like a meta one. <laughs> Okay then, that's it. So thank you for your attention and uh, have a stop in the booth that uh, demonstrates it in, in you know real life. So thank you.